Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We're taking a look at our final video covering topic 9.1, our introduction to parametric equations and how it can fuse a little bit with calculus. And we're actually going to move into our very first motion problem that deals with parametrics. Of course, we've been dealing with motion problems all throughout calculus, but you're now going to segue that particular concept into something a little bit more BC type calculus. Now I want to make sure that you're aware that this particular projectile motion does involve the force of gravity, which is typically not going to be seen on the AP calculus exam, but it very could well appear on some kind of an AP exam, say like in physics class. So let's take a look at our projectile motion problem. So here we see our example number six from topic 9.1, our very final part of the notes from 9.1. And it's entitled a projectile motion using parametric equations. So we're, we're seeing this problem as being presented as this projectile that's fired at an angle theta, where theta is between zero and pi over two to the horizontal, and we're given this initial speed of v sub o meters per second. Assuming that there is no air resistance, the position of the projectile after t seconds is given by the parametric equations, and they're pretty intense. x of t is v sub 0 cosine theta t, y of t is negative 1 half g t squared plus v 0 sine t, a sine theta times t. And we're told that t is only going to be positive or zero in this case. And g is the acceleration due to gravity. I can't emphasize enough that this is typically not the kind of problem that you're going to see on your APBC calculus exam because of the influence of gravity. But I still think it's a great entry problem into the motion questions that you're going to really start to see a lot more of as we move farther into parametric equations and then into vectors where we don't have gravity involved. And I know that it's very likely that some of you are looking at this thinking, oh, this looks very familiar because you may have been exposed to this in a physics class. If that's the case, enjoy the review. So for our part A, find the slope of the tangent line to the motion of the projectile as a function of t. Well, you don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. In other words, just because this problem is unique in that it's dealing with motion, we still see this idea of slope of tangent line presented to us, and we still want to use the concept that we learned before. The slope of our tangent line always is and always will be dy over dx. It's the change in y over the change in x. But because we have this written as parametric equations with the variable t, note t is really our variable. Theta is a constant that we can just plug in after the fact because when we shoot this projectile we're, we're going to know what kind of angle, right? We know that angle is somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees which is pretty much the way that a projectile is going to be shot, right? And so we would know that theta beforehand. So in this particular case, if we take the derivative of y with respect to t, we're going to get negative 1 half g, uh, t, I'm sorry, 2 times negative 1 half g t to the first. So that 2 comes out in front, multiplies by the negative half, which pretty much wipes it out, and then you have negative g multiplied by t. And then we add to that, well, we notice that this v sub naught times sine theta, this is just really acting as a constant in front of our variable t. So when we take the derivative of that constant times t, we would just get that constant. And again, I know that it's very unusual for you to react to all these different letters serving as constants. If you take physics, that's pretty much par for the course. That's what you see all the time. But as a math background solely, we don't see these constant looking things that that are variable looking things I should say that truly are constants all that often so there's our numerator divide that by the derivative of our x with respect to t which is just going to be the coefficient of the t that we see in the x of t equation v sub naught times cosine and it's very easy to think okay well what do I do from here well you don't do a thing. 
This is the slope of the tangent line to the motion of the projectile as a function of t. We wanted this to be in terms of t, and it certainly is. All I would need to know is what was my initial velocity? That's something that we probably could have computed or we would have known uh, beforehand before we shot this projectile. And of course, the angle at which we shot it. And then maybe it would be helpful to know what planet we're on so we know what gravitational constant. Now, as far as part B, this is going to kind of go back uh, to some earlier days of calculus when we're asked to find when uh, or at what time will this projectile reach its maximum height. So you have to remember, we reach our maximum height. Okay, well, that's going to be when a derivative is equal to zero. Remember that from maybe a year ago, right? Whenever we have a curve that looks like this and we have its maximum height, we know that we achieve that potentially when the derivative is equal to zero. And that's why we've always set derivatives equal to zero to find these extrema. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to set our derivative equal to zero. And in this case, that's going to occur whenever our numerator equals zero. Fractions can only be zero when the numerator is zero. And so when we make that happen, we're going to then be able to solve this for t fairly easily by subtracting over our v sub naught sine theta. And then we'll divide over our negative g. Now the negatives are going to just cancel. And so essentially you just simply have the initial velocity times the sine of the angle at which you shot that projectile divided by your gravitational constant. And that's always going to be the time at which your projectile reaches its maximum height. Now it's likely that you might work on some more problems in the skill builders that deal with very specific instances of this particle motion with a specific uh, theta value. One of my favorites is uh, a ball is hit from a bat. Will it be a home run um, at a, a given a certain height of a fence and length from which the fence is from home plate? Problems like that definitely kind of find their way into these parametric equations quite often. Anyway, I hope this helps and uh, we'll see you at the next video.